is our real thoughts on Secret of Nim 2, Timmy oh. to the Rescue. Oh no. Um, no, 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 no. <laughs> this is one of those sequels because a lot I, of people have been asking me to do this for years because they know I love the. the I'm gonna warn you so now. Much. This may be mostly him. Well, first off, you know about what he thinks of Secret of Nim, and second, I don't even know if I remember this movie that well. <laughs> I'll help you along. Uh, but I know what you're talking about because I thought. It's so forgettable. I thought I was gonna hate this film even more, kind of, than I did, but it is another one of those when I. It's like not it? even worth it. Yeah, that's kind of the feeling I get. Like, when I try to... If you were to really think about the choices they made in this, of course you'd be pissed off and really angry and stuff, but it's one of those things where I think so the lack of effort put into it, it's clearly they're not trying to be like, hey, no, no, this is what really happened, guys, and we know the original and we love it, and we're going to really try to represent a good sequel to you. It's like, Represent! No. Yeah, no, it's like, no, nah, you know what? That film's getting a little bit of a following uh, with... I think with kids, I don't know, it's just being bought. Just make another sequel for kids or something. Uh, use... Well, Actually, the animation's was... not the worst, honestly. Well, it's, was... it's by no means Don Bluth, but for a straight-to-DVD thing, like, it's This is back the in the late 90s, early 2000s, when direct-to-video sequels roamed the earth. Pretty much, yeah, there were just sequels to everything. I'm so glad we're not... I mean, no matter how many sequels the they things, make now, it's I like, guess what, this was a weird fucking thing that just went on forever. I, oh, God. I, bl I think Eisner started that shit. Because uh, uh, it wasn't oh, even yeah, right. yeah, it with the Disney. Yeah. With, it sounds right. Uh, Disney was doing it the most, and then, Disney like, Disney started, started it, and then up, just, yeah. Uh, and what, what weirds me out is, <sighs> of all the movies you could do, to cough up a sequel for. I'm like, Secret of Nim? Really? Like, it just, I felt like... I can see a prequel, which I hear is what they're working on now. Let, oh. me, let me put it this way. Like, Bambi is a big movie. Lion King, big movie. And I'm not saying Secret of Nim isn't a big movie, but it's that sort of movie that you kind of remember. You're like, oh yeah, that movie, that, that weird movie I saw as a kid. And like, this, it, it's not something that I would have been like, sequel. Yeah. Like, and, and so many years later. Like, that. what, what was that, early 80s? Mm -hmm. And yeah, so you're looking at a, a, at least 15-year gap, maybe? Mm. Like, I, I, don't, I forgot when this film came out. Well, what it feels like to me is that they probably figured that, hey, this is getting a fan base that they probably thought was mostly among kids, so make another one for kids, when really I think it's probably more adults that were getting into that movie and, and, and buying it and wanting to show it to their kids. Um... If, yeah, yeah, I, I, because as a kid, I really liked Secret Nim, and I knew this was like big and important. But I'm a kid. I'm gonna like my Ninja Turtles and my other stuff. You know, I'm, I'm gonna I'm like trying more. To I'm time. trying to walk on thin ice here because <clears throat> I think Secret of Nim is one of the best animated films ever made. Like just way up but, there. But I know what you're talking I, about. But it. yeah, from a marketing so, standpoint, and I'm not, why I'm would not you make a saying, sequel? To and this? I'm so I'm not. It's not to imply that Secret of Nim is not a movie that's bad. I'm just like. Why that one? There, there is nothing in its, like, kind of history and its appeal to kids that if I were a studio executive, I'd be like, aha! I can make a lot of toys with this! this. Yeah, yeah it, it just, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, most of the characters are very grisly and ugly, and I mean, even if you were to make a toy on Mrs. Grizzly like, or the you know, crumb, it it'd be tough because of the way they're drawn. It would be like being in Japan and having God knows how many animes you could do a sequel to and them going, you know what we need a sequel to? Spirited Away. That one. Why that one? A direct-to-DVD like, sequel A direct-to-DVD. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, just how would you even do that? Little... It's like you got um, Evangelion, you got Full Metal Alchemist, you got all this. Ah, Spirited Away. <laughs> Let's do that way. It's like, it, it, it's such an atmospheric film on its own. It's like, why would you need this? I don't know. Um, um, but no, so in this... Everything you can say about it, I mean that... Really, okay, I'm actually not against having another main character. I mean, because I feel like Mrs. Brisby's story was so good and she kind of had her arc and everything. It's like, okay, fair enough. Go on to the other member of the family. That's well, then fine. Make Timmy and then... Here's the thing if you put it on paper and you didn't say anything about how awful it was going to be, you just said, we're going to do a sequel to Secret of Nim. It's not going to be about Mrs. Brisby, but it's going to be about her son, the one she saved in the first one. Yeah, like. And how he saves a bunch of people. I would have been like, Okay, actually, yeah, that sounds, sounds like it could totally like, work. So yeah. much of that movie it, is dedicated to saving him, so now what's going to happen for him? But there was a small problem. They really sucked at it. Yeah, they really, really sucked at it. Um, 
And I, I'd be lying if I said, you know, again, just to sort of show the power of the movie, because when I did see Mrs. Brisby in this film, even though she's not drawn the same and they make it look a little different, different animation and stuff, there was kind of like this, oh, there she is. It's just weird seeing her again, because I so love that oh, character in the first one. Different voice actress. Too. Yeah, no, That's but even with the different voice actress, it was something I was kind of, it was just kind of neat seeing her move again and be animated, and it's like, and it's sort of continuing the stories, but it was only lasted a couple seconds, and I'm like, oh yeah, this is... That's right, it's a shitty direct-to-DVD sequel. Um, and it's just one of those things where it's just the most basic stop a crazy mad scientist or whatever from doing something, and it did have that really weird-ass twist where the brother <laughs> takes control, gets voiced by Eric Idle out of nowhere, and is just suddenly insane. It, and it, it just turned into a Pinky in the Brain episode yeah. out of nowhere. And it's just something where it's like, the movie is mostly boring up until that part. There, there it goes batshit insane, which we were kind of thankful for. Uh, yeah, like at, at least, least it woke we us could, up. Yeah, at least we could have like a funny uh, reaction to it. But everything else was just so... It was every other mouse traveling in big world story. You know, there just was not that much to it. And like I said, I really have a problem with anything that builds up big time you know, especially for a little kid, you're the chosen one, you're gonna do oh, great stuff, you're just born great. And I really hate that stuff. I feel I like just... we were getting away from that and then Harry Potter showed up, I'm like, fuck! Yeah, it's like, wow, oh. shit, we have this story now. Um, which I still haven't read the books, the, books the one like, who yeah, lived, but... you're the chosen one. Yeah. And then we had the Matrix, and then we had the new Star Wars, and then... Uh... Yeah, but... Yeah, I don't like those stories. You refer to um, the prophecy, the one who will restore balance to the Force and destroy this franchise. I think I think I hear for the same reason a lot of people hate princesses. It's just it's the same thing. You're just born and you're great. It's like you don't have to really do anything. Everyone's saying how great you're going to be and wonderful you're going to do. And I would love to oh, see this kind of I want to see. It's I like, want to see a story. I would kill to write a story or see a story where there's a prophecy about somebody and turns out it's wrong. Yeah. Uh, and it's, I would love that too. The prophecy is wrong. That person dies. It's actually up to someone else around them to actually finish what that person started because the prophecy, you know what, fucked up. Well, that's kind of what I like in Dune as the books keep going. That's kind of what happens. That's, that's well, what the, happens. yeah, the religion that gets brought up around Paul. Yeah. And, uh, uh, no, I, I love go into shit. spoilers, but I, that's almost what happens in. That's kind of what happens, I guess, in Star Wars, but those movies sucked, the yeah. prequels, anyway, so <laughs> nobody remembers that um <laughs> but yeah so you have i don't know it, it's it's mostly forgettable it's mostly a cash in so it's hard to i don't know it's hard to get like blood boiling boilingly angry at it uh and for me the big thing is just how much they kind of just disregard mrs brisby and i think just for someone that has so much built up around him and then really in the grand scheme of things does not do much he goes on a little adventure uh, you know, and so a lot of it caused by him and caused by the and that's hype that's around me. him. And where Mrs. Brisby, I mean, just came out of the blue and did all this stuff and discovered sort of like the, the secret to the stone and, and uh, you know, braved all these terrible things. And because nobody was telling her, hey, well, you're... You're great. You should be able to do this. If anything, it was because she was connected to the other person that was great and proved himself that people were counting. Well, okay, yeah, whatever. She had but to went... step in her husband's shoes is basically what happened. Yeah. And... He was the one with the legend around him. And she only... That's the only thing I love about the movie. She only finds out about it pretty much after he's dead, it seems. Yeah. It's like, everybody's like, oh, your husband. Oh, your husband's like, oh, his sacrifice. And she's just like, ah. <laughs> so, yeah, she doesn't understand, and she is still braving all this stuff because she is so afraid of it, but she still steps in, she has to remind herself why to do it, and, uh, you know, it's just such a, a it, fucking great character, and all that danger feels so real because of her fear, but also because of her bravery of confronting it. And then here, where she's just kind of tossed in the movie, like, that's the thing. I guess if Timmy's story had been all that interesting, I would have forgiven that, but to have... Yeah. One of the greatest. But to give him a fucking statue, and then it's like her statue oh is over. Oh yeah, she oh was just my God. nothing. It's like, what did this little pipsqueak do? It's like he wasn't even really afraid of anything, and he didn't have to really stand up to anything. He's just sort of doing what he didn't do every anything. mouse on an adventure movie does. He didn't really movies. earn it. And then uh, to take what is essentially one of the greatest single mother characters in all of animated film history. Just one of my favorite characters in general. Yeah, and, and to just. Toss her aside, like I, as I said, had the, the had Timmy been an interesting character, I could have forgiven it. But the fact that he's not, it just makes it so much more insulting. 
I'm like, we had this perfect character here, and then we just ditch her, and then go for this idiot character, like, who is just literally just a stock character out of every single movie. Your stock boy adventurer character, and I'm like, I could see any number of animated films with this character. I could see way better Don Bluth movies with this character. Yeah. Fucking, fucking Feifel was a way better character than Timmy will ever be. Um, so, just, ah. There's something that bothers me about, because I think we... We come from a family of really creative people, and there's something about, like, all of us kind of have this understanding where it's like, if we see someone growing up and they're really creative and are really smart and just, like, have these, you know, really impressive minds, we kind of know not to glorify it too much or to not, like, overdo it because we've... I think in our history, we've kind of seen these things go awry as well. I mean, not just family background, well, but just backgrounds in general. Own egos, they, yeah, you know. and, the, and then it either builds up too much pressure or they get too drunk on the attention. And it's one of those things where when you see it happening in movies where it's just, you're going to be great, you're going to be fantastic, and let's sing songs about mm. you and stuff like that before you've done anything. I just, again, I just really look at it and like, wouldn't it be interesting to see people around a person and they're like, they don't quite know how to act. Like, they don't quite know where they should build this person up you know what or this not. Is. And they're trying to figure it out and there's a little bit of a mystery to it or something like that. You know, instead of just, you're great, you're phenomenal, you're the one, you're the chosen one. I mean, wouldn't it be great if it was like more of a secret and they're trying to figure it out and they're trying to... See, that's what I fucking like about Ender's Game. I know a lot of people didn't like that movie and I didn't read the book, so you're probably right. <laughs> you know, the book's probably better, but... The book is better. I'll, but, I'll save you the But, but that, that that's what I liked about that movie is that they didn't know and they were just like let's just see what we can find out let's see where this would lead and i like the way that kid played it uh and i thought that's that was an example of that of kind of like the semi-chosen one done right in my opinion like that's always how i want to see i don't it disagree done and i think i think finally i i've got a comparison you know what this is you have terminator where you have linda hamilton you know going through the whole movie and she does this really interesting character now imagine if they did terminator 2 and Frickin' John Connor shows up, Eddie Furlong, like, saves Sarah Connor there, and is like, well, bye, Mom, and then it's just about his dorky adventure, and you know, it, it just would feel wrong. Mm -hmm. That's what this movie feels like. And, and then not only that, but his adventures with the Terminator suck. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what this movie is. It's like if you took something, like, fun that expands on whatever the original would have had and just removed anything that made it good. You know, Anything! You know, it's so fascinating you brought that up about Terminator, because actually, I never thought Sarah Connor was interesting in the first movie. <laughs> I actually thought the second one is where she got interesting. But uh, that's part of the point. She even gets more interesting. I thought she was interesting enough in the first movie. I mean, she's not, like, um, bad or terrible or anything, but it's just kind of like, you know, yeah, you know what? okay. Whatever. You go up against Arnold Schwarzenegger as an unkillable robot. <laughs> but, I, but that's the thing. I think a lot of it, it even... Uh, Shit, was it Michael Bean? Is that the guy that goes back in time, the first one? Yeah, yeah. even he's kind of the same thing. No, you don't get it, do you? He's after you. No, why doesn't oh anyone God. believe me? Why doesn't anyone? I, I have issues with that Send first movie. Send all I of your hate mail. No, no, to... I love that movie. It, it's, uh, we should you know, just write, We should just write the address yeah, down just and flash it across. <laughs> no, I actually do really enjoy that movie, but I mean, it's... it's I don't know. There's wow, issues dude. with wow. it. <laughs> It, well, it's nowhere anyway, near as good as Terminator Genesis, okay? Anyway, <laughs> nowhere before near as good as you just completely shit on a wonderful property. <laughs> um, hey, Terminator Genesis did that already. I Anyway, that is just my point. You have a character like Sarah Connor, and then imagine doing a sequel where basically she shows up for five minutes and does nothing, and it's all about her idiot kid, who basically is really uninteresting to watch, doesn't do much of anything, and by the end of the movie, you're like, why did I waste two hours watching this kid? Like, yeah, that would have been. Let's give him that, a statue. That would have been the Timmy's Adventure Terminator Two. <laughs> that know, is what that movie's like. Yeah, you know what would have been cool for the statue thing, because that is the one thing that just pissed me off. Like, they, they really fucking build a statue of him next to, you know, the 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 father and everything. If they had the statue of the father, and then when Timmy's arriving there, they just put up the statue of Mrs. Brisby. And then, when he goes on his stupid little adventure and actually does something, you know, I have to write that in, but does something of actual risk and worth and stuff like that, uh, then they put the, the statue of him up there. Um, 
Because then they can be there as like a whole family stuff, but when it's just the father and just the son. <laughs> it would be like Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> he likes the nativity. I mean, no, even, <sighs> even playing the statue of him as a kid is not fair. Because again, it's building up all this stuff that's like he's never going to be able to amount to. It's just, I don't like that. I don't do I mean, this is why so many child actors, you know, turn out so screwed up and stuff. Because they're just exposed to this world where they're just glorified and then forgotten and they get used to the attention in this really messed up environment and it's like, it's not healthy! You know, and I, I really resist. It's one thing when they do it to people, it's even more when they do it to kids in these stories. And I just think that's just not fair. It's not healthy. And Unfortunately, it's not we have shows like TNC. Yeah, yeah that helps set people straight. Yeah, that's not that bad. <laughs> so, um, I think that's about it. And I'm trying to think of anything else to. Eric Idle is really fun as the villain. <laughs> He's the best thing in it. But he, but, but that's the thing. He belong. That that's a different movie. Mm -hmm. Like that's the weird thing about it. Is like it, it's. It's three competing films. You got something remotely resembling Secret of Nim that they dump almost instantly. You've got this just crappy kids adventure. Then you have whatever movie Eric Idle's in. Yeah. Like, so he's great, but it, it's just he's great because he's so just is what the fuck. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Is has Bluth seen this film? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm sure he must have. I'm, I mean, I'm curious if he's ever said anything about it. Like, honestly, if I had to guess, my thought would be just be oh, direct to DVD. Yeah, okay. Honestly, is it, yeah. Is if, it worth it? Is if I were getting if, angry, if I were yet? if I were Don Bluth, I probably wouldn't have even bothered to watch it. Um, I mean, if he has, honestly, I, I would have been like, William, I, I know William, like, William clearly Friedkin, there's not. Uh, William Friedkin, I think, said he never saw any of the Exorcist sequels. <laughs> Which in, he should see three. I, I, I was gonna say in good. one in one respect it's sad because I actually think the third one's pretty good. But I I, I think he was talking about two in particular. I'm like I don't blame him. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like nope, haven't seen it. And I'm like yeah, it seems fair. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, that's that's about it. I like go I said, watch it's Secret not, of Nim. Uh, yeah. And just, then watch our review of Secret of Nim too. Yes. I don't think don't bother getting the it. film. Um, there's yeah, there, there's really no point. It's not even so bad. It's like angry no. bad or so bad as good with the exception of Eric that. Idle yeah. uh, that's the only thing where it's like okay now this is kind of fun for how batshit crazy it is um, but yeah it's one of those things where it's like it's pretty definitely a skip uh, so that's about it and we'll see you at the next one later